Welcome back to the news for November 30th, 2014. Ubisoft just released a patch for Assassin's Creed Unity, which includes over 300 bug fixes. The very next day, the CEO of the Montreal Toronto Studios issued a statement saying that anyone who purchased Assassin's Creed Unity will be receiving the Season Pass DLC for free. Current Season Pass holders will be eligible for a free game from a short list, including Far Cry 4, which, you know, that's a great way to pick up that game, I suppose. In the statement, they mentioned that they are sorry for releasing such a poor quality product and that they're happy to have any feedback from the community. The comment section of the statement is just another laundry list of bugs that are still in the game. So they've still got work to do on that. It's interesting because the same week, Ubisoft had another press release for their upcoming game, The Crew, stating that review copies will not be given out to media until the day of release, stating that it is a multiplayer focused game and that the review media will not be able to have the full experience that the game has to offer until release day. Therefore, you will not be able to see a review of the game until well after the game is already out for release. Which is curious, because Assassin's Creed Unity was released 12 hours before the review embargo, so people could purchase the game before any reviews were released, but at least the media actually could have played the game then. Now, There'll be no reviews available of any kind for the crew until well after release. So buyer beware, do not buy that game. I'm just gonna say it because you cannot trust this company right now. This is after they failed to send out review copies to certain outlets, allowing only a few websites to have day one reviews of Far Cry 4. So just keep in mind, if it says Ubisoft on the box, you probably should wait until you read a review, even if the game is currently available for purchase. It's a curious thing because after Assassin's Creed Unity's 12 hour gap from review embargo, they said they were going to work on that and try not to have that kind of situation again. Yet here we are, about a month later, and they're doing the same thing. Maybe their marketing plan just accounts for this? Maybe it's part of their strategy this year to just not have reviews for their game and just have them on the shelves? I don't know, it's really hard to tell. But either way, don't pre-order games, especially from Ubisoft. The Counter-Strike Go scene has had kind of a dark week as three professional players were outed as cheaters. All three were VAC banned this week, and the most notable Kali of Team Titan actually spoke out about it. Kali stated, I am aware that with my bullshit my career is now over and my team in a very bad position. They did not deserve it. Kali went on to say that somewhere near 40% of professional players cheat. A few days before this, a player who goes by the name SF was banned from ESEA, which is a third-party matchmaking system for Counter-Strike professional players. But he was not banned until the actual VAC update, which hit Kali and SMN. Counter-Strike's been gaining a lot of popularity, and it's actually an eSport that I really do enjoy watching. It's really sad that this happens, that great teams get stuck with bad seeds, and that just starts a witch hunt where everyone starts looking at everyone's replays trying to spot some hacks. There's a very large side business out there for people who create cheats that can be used that are completely undetectable by VAC, completely undetectable by anyone even watching the player play. So it's not surprising that this will happen every once in a while. What is surprising that someone the caliber of Kali would actually be caught cheating. He is a champion. He's won, he's won lots of money playing this game for a couple different teams. So it is quite shocking that someone of that caliber would be caught out like that. But at the same time, you can't feel sorry for him because he's a cheater. And it's good to see him go then. Farewell. Star Citizen is now approaching $64 million in crowdfunding and they announced a new feature, pets. This isn't really a story that's really worth talking about, except for the fact that they have $64 million now, which is about the cost of a AAA game's development. The scope of their game is far, far, far greater than any other game that's been released before. So what is it that Star Citizen is promising in their game? They're going to have a complete single player campaign that can be played online or offline. It'll be drop in, drop out co-op. There'll be a persistent universe hosted by their own servers and then moddable multiplayer hosted by individual players on their own servers. There will be no subscriptions and no pay to win. So there will be microtransactions, which is how they're going to be funding the game mostly once it's out. But 
as far as features, they have already also announced a full first person shooter mechanic to the game where you can land on a planet and get into a full on first person shooter type battle. You can get into in space dogfights in your ships. You can fly several different kinds of ships. There's going to be a full on economy system so a player can just come on and only be a merchant and do merchant things like trading and moving items around the universe trying to sell things. You'll be able to explore and find new star systems, which they will be adding on a regular basis. So for $64 million, some might think that they can do all these things. But if you look at the development budgets for most AAA games, the most recent one being Destiny. Destiny cost $140 million to create, and that includes a limited marketing budget of $1 million. Ubisoft's Watch Dogs development budget was around 50 million euros, which is $68 million. And Borderlands 2 was a development budget of around $35 million. So they have twice as much as like a game such as Borderlands 2, but less than half of what it costs to build a game like Destiny. So it's really hard to know exactly if they're going to be able to make it and actually fully realize this vision that they have. Hopefully they do. It seems like a game that I am really interested in playing. So $64 million does seem like a lot of money, but for the scope that they have for the game that they want to create, they're actually kind of on a shoestring budget and it's kind of scary. But if you ask me, they should probably buckle down and finish one aspect of it so it's playable and then add more things later once they have an online store up because just building that system can cost a lot of money. But anyway, that's the news for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.